welcome to the Monday, February the 6th, 2023 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. We'll let members and staff introduce themselves. Eric Gilbertson, member. Benjamin Cheney, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. Martha Smirsky, member. Member. Your connection's a little rough with audio, Liz. You might want to turn your camera off. Okay, at this time, we'll let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures. Um, so we do have an applicant on remotely. Um, some of this little spiel will be for people who are watching the meeting via Orca, but there's still some pointers as well for everybody else. I'm going to share my screen. All right. So uh, for those members of the public viewing tonight's meeting um, via Orca Media, you can participate in the Design Review Committee meeting via the Zoom platform. Um, you can do that by either typing this uh, link into your um, web browser and it should take you right into the Zoom meeting and it'll just say that the host will admit you shortly and that would be me. Um, or you can call into this phone number, plug in this meeting ID when prompted. Um, and again, I will get a, a little notice that someone's trying to enter into the meeting and I can let you in. Um, if anyone is having problems accessing the meeting, please email me at M Crandall at Montpelier BT.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting um, for anybody who's trying to get in. Um, for if anyone does attend via Zoom, turning on your video is optional. Um, please do keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise um, and reserve the chat function in Zoom for troubleshooting or logistics questions, please. Anything substantive, we want to be done via audio over either your uh, microphone or your phone. Um, in the event the public is unable to access the meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. At this time, unless anybody has anything else to add, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda from the members? Move. All second. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Stephen. Lynn. Okay, the agenda is approved. We can go to the first applicant for 8 Summit Street. Owner applicant, Timo Bradley, for review or replacement of siding. Is someone- Timo's on remotely. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm here. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure uh, what more I need to say. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, hoping to, uh, yeah, get this this uh, gable and wall um, complete and uh, make a, a significant energy upgrade uh, in doing so. Um, it's, a, it's currently a two by four wall. Um, that's all it is. Um, and so I'm, I, I'd like to put three inches of, uh, of Styco insulation. This is kind of a, a, a new product. Um, it's a wood-based fiber board uh, insulation. Uh, it, it runs just shy of, of, uh, of our value of three, three, uh, per inch. So, um, so it's good. I, I think, uh, a good air barrier, uh, in between, uh, layer of plywood, um, another weather barrier, cedar breather, and then finally, uh, painted shingles. Timo, is it just that one wall you plan on doing? Yep. And and the rest will stay with the vinyl siding. Most of the vinyl is is gone at this point. The other, the eastern gable, um, I completed uh, during COVID, mm -hmm. uh, the first COVID winter. And that's where we have a photograph of Timo and what you're going to Correct. do. Correct. Yep. Doing the other side identically to that. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And is that an accurate representation of the color? Yes. Okay. 
Anybody, any members have any questions, comments, or suggestions? Looks good to me. Looks Huge like improvement. A, nice job. I was going to say, looks like a significant improvement. <laughs> Thank you. Both performance wise and appearance wise. Yeah, it's, re it's really nice. Actually, my parents live next door. Um, they're they're my tenants, um, and it really it actually changed everything. Uh, it doesn't get as hot in the summer anymore, and they're very comfortable right now. Um, and so, yeah, I'm after after the other night, I can reminded that that uh, <laughs> this is really not up to par uh, the way it is. I'd like to just get it done. Sounds good. We can go through the criteria for the application. Exterior design and materials of new construction or, or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Additions and alterations to non-historic and non-contributing structures shall respect and be compatible with existing patterns and setbacks found in adjacent buildings. New additions on non-historic and non-contributing structures that overshadow or diminish the historic character or of adjacent contributing structures are prohibited. Uh, this application for the change of siting is acceptable. Well, just a second. I have one in my pocket. Okay, I've also got spares. <laughs> that one was a little sketchy. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character-defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building. Acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Ben. Martha, I'm a yes. Liz, yes. And Stephen, so it's approved five to zero. So Timo, we will uh, get that back downstairs and hopefully we'll get that permit issued tomorrow um, and mail it out to you. Super, thank you, thank you all very much. Thank you, Timo. I'll sign off now. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, and good luck with your project. Thank you much. Okay. Bye. 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 We can go to the next application. Is for one sixty two Barry Street. Owner applicant Lindy Biggs, replacement of windows and siding. Welcome. You. Describe your project for us. Do I need to do all this? I'm Lindy oh, Biggs. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 also for just sort of general purposes. Usually that's used more for city council. Okay. Um, the project, uh, if you drive down Berry Street very often, you might have noticed that the little house that goes <laughs> on Berry Street, <laughs> it's a more modern structure. It's small. It's um, has hideous gray vinyl cladding on it at the moment, which <laughs> is um, disintegrating. So we've been nailing it back on, which is what it was. Yeah, it's not supposed to do that, but <clears throat> so we're removing the vinyl siding. Um, one, there's a large window on the lower floor that is single pane with a storm on it. We're replacing that with triple pane. It'll look, essentially looks the same. The um, same size, Wendy? Same size, yeah, we're not changing the size at all. And then there's a small awning window on the side <clears throat> that is in, not in good shape. And we're replacing that with a triple pane awning window of the same size. And then we're adding four inches of insulation, which the builder really likes the mineral wool board um, 
that's not what I'm familiar with, but we went around and around with different strategies for sliding. And this is this is one that he uses consistently and really likes it. It's um it's a rock wool. This is <laughs> I might not get all the details right because I'm remembering what he's told me. It's a kind of a spun rock. And so it is completely um, hydrophobic. It cannot get wet. So that seems like, anyway. So they will put a, a weather barrier on, what does he call it? Um, weather resistive barrier. That'll go on the, the um, whatever plywood, I assume, is the substrata. And then the weather resistant barrier, four inches of insulation, and then spruce clabberts over that. And as you see from my little drawing, my, the photograph with my drawings on it, we're, we're adding quite a lot of trim to it to give it, to try to give it a little bit of a historic look for that street. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. Wendy, I'm having trouble figuring out where you are exactly. Can you give me some relative? Sure. Um, it, you know where the senior center is? Yes. Um, if you were going toward the Hunger Mountain from there, it's on the same side of the street as mm -hmm. the senior center. Do you remember the old um, lawnmower repair? Yes. Almost across the street from that. Okay. So yeah. it'd be on the left if you were proceeding to the co-op? Yeah, that's okay. right. Thank yeah. you. I can also pull it up on the screen in a minute. So you can see the, the street. And here we go. Let me do a quick share screen. So there's the building. And there's headed towards the co-op. To, the, to your right, yeah. Yeah, headed yeah. towards the co-op versus headed back towards downtown. There will be no shutters. And then there's across the street. Thank you. Yep. So you're taking the shutters off the, the sort shutters. Of thickening trim around those second story windows. Yeah. Okay. Bold, bold trim all around that will, I think, give it a much nicer look than shutters. Have the windows on the upper level been replaced prior? They're they're double pane. Um, they, you know, maybe at some point when we recover the cost of this. This bit will improve the windows, but they're they're actually quite tight. Um, and the builder's gonna do whatever he's doing so that the windows would be relatively easy to replace at some point. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I'm nice to think ahead. Uh, I'm I'm a planner. <laughs> that's what this. I mean, that's what this house is. We live up an icy hill outside of town right now, and one of these days. We're not going to feel like that's okay, and so we're going to move into town. Yeah, right now it's it's a rental. Do you have a color picked out for the clapboard? Um, you should have. I I included a I pasted on to my little photograph um some colors. Yeah, this little white. Yeah, like yeah. The the siding will be kind of a tan, and the trim off white. Yeah, the one that has the green for the put on it. Yeah, there's a little bit here that's good. Oh, thank you. Oh, I see. Yeah, thank you. We'll have a. I can't remember if the building next door, if that building is still that color. Right it now. is. Yeah. So it'll be a little more almost. There is sort of a green ish, yeah. and or the trim almost makes the main color look more green. The trim is so green. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to find a color that wasn't the same as the surrounding houses, but would blend in yeah. nicely enough. Yeah, there's a lot more sort of browns and stuff. Well, good. Thanks for doing your research. I, that's about the 10th iteration of color scheme. <laughs> <laughs> but I kept coming back to that. 
That's often one of the hardest choices to make. Because <laughs> you're going to live with it for a long time. <laughs> and there's a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Any members have any comments, questions, or suggestions? This is like this, she's covered all her bases. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, that's okay. I was just saying, ooh, it, this is sound really bad, bad. Oh, I think you're going to have to mute or turn off the speakers on one of your devices. Try it again. Oh. Yeah, you've got two things connected there that both have their volume on, maybe. Creating a feedback loop for yourself. No, no, no. I like, looks good. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> And again, I can go through the criteria for this project as well. Exterior design and materials, new construction or, or alterations shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Additions and alterations in non to non-historic and non-contributing structures shall respect and be compatible with existing patterns and setbacks found in adjacent buildings, uh, there are no additions on this. It's just a change of the siding and window. Acceptable. Hold on, Steve. Procedurally, I don't think we voted. You asked us for comments, which we didn't do. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm just going through the criteria at this point. Unless you had something you wanted to add in the in the additions at the end. So anyway, existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Acceptable. And that was any all that well, was one more down here. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building acceptable. So all in favor of the application that's presented, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Steve. Martha, I'm a yes. Liz. Yes. So the application is approved five to zero. Since you're here. Uh, unlike Timo, I'm going to have you sign the recommendation form. Okay. Um, just because it's helpful when you're here to have you do that. And we'll be able to issue that permit tomorrow. So Great. We'll, as, as long as Audra and I are both here and one of us can do the software. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, although that would be the zoning permit. You want to ask Michelle about the question about the okay. building permit. So oh, if, you just, if you just sign in that block there. Okay. We used to get everybody's signature because... Everybody would be in person, but thank you. Good luck with your project. Sorry, that's small. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be great. I'm changing everything. Oh, yeah. Good yeah. luck. <laughs> Front and back. I need yeah. luck. <laughs> uh, I. Do you have, just as a reminder on this last one, I do have a seven o'clock DRB meeting tonight that involves the Vermont College of Fine Arts application. Okay. So people will start probably coming yes. in okay. before seven. So if we can just try and stay on task. We'll try to be one. quick. <laughs> so again, we'll go to the next application, 155 Northfield Street, Orchard Valley Waldorf School. Welcome back, Sandy. Hi there. <laughs> You're keeping busy. Describe your project. <laughs> <laughs> A very different project. <laughs> yes. Um, Orchard uh, Valley uh, Waldorf School owns Child's Garden, which is an existing daycare up on Northfield Street. And um, they stopped using the building and started to rent space at the Elks Club 
the Elks Club lease is ending, so they need to get back in to their building. Um, they need to make some changes to it for code. Um, and also a major issue of safety uh, right now, children going to the playground have to cross over the path of cars where cars are parking, which is not great. So they want to reconfigure the parking spot. Um, they also um, have uh, more little children now. So they are expanding their early childhood uh, infant program. So this change is, um, you, you have the application, um, is minimal changes on the outside. They want to enclose the um, open porch. And um, in doing that, they want to add an, uh, a better exit on the east side of the building that has a ramp down and around towards the street. Um, and they need to add some parking spaces. They have nine teachers. Um, so they're expanding it to the maximum allowed by the city um, without, there's a minimum and a maximum for parking lots. So that they're, they're able to live within that maximum. Um, after we applied, it became evident that the project is actually in design review, which is why it's more than an administrative approval. Um, it really should not be. I talked to Mike Miller about this. I, I believe he agrees, um, but it is in fact here now. That's why I'm here now. Yeah. And um, so I, it's been the only reason why, it's the only property along Northfield Street that's in design review district besides the community garden. And the only reason why the two of those are is because they used to be part of national life. And back when I was active with design review, they had made the Gateway West district, what was it, 20 or 30 years ago. And because it was all contiguous property, it extended all the way over to this area. It has been subdivided off and somehow was missed in the last revisions to the map. So it is stuck in design review. Um, so to be clear, the buildings on either side are not in design review. Actually, up and down the entire street are not in design review. So um, I was surprised to see you here on that subject. Yes, me too. But um, I think it is important that we do what it needs to be done because here it is in design review. Oh, the other question, yep. Yeah. Meredith did ask me for photographs. Um, the form said drawings or photographs, so I'm applying both. And the other question that seemed to be a little bit of a friction point was, um, is this in design review? There needs to be some screening around the parking lot. I'm actually not in favor of that because I would rather have the the playground be visible from the street, but your requirements require a screen. And um, we had suggested raspberries, partly because they're food for birds. They're great for butterflies and bees. Um, children like to pick raspberries. And if anyone else has raspberries, you know that they make an extremely dense hedge, actually year round. Um, uh, there was some pushback on that, that maybe there needs to be, a, I personally wouldn't mix anything with raspberries, very hard to keep <laughs> separated, but um, they are open to making it a cedar hedge if you want. I'm just worried because usually cedar trees grow up and then you can see through them and then they're actually no longer a screen, they're kind of a irritating thing. So up to you. And I mean, the standards for the screening, it doesn't have to be something that you can't see through. Um, we just, in, in the planning department, we just had a couple questions about the effectiveness of just raspberry bushes, but the it's, raspberry, it's really something, yeah. it just it's landscaping is one of those things that's in the DRC's purview once it comes in. So, you know, we'll, we'll go with whatever you guys recommend or are happy with. I, I have raspberries and 
uh, three feet of canes grow. They out tried to compete against each other, so they'll probably grow seven <laughs> feet tall. And my experience is they're dense as heck, but um, it, yes, we will just do what you folks want. Uh, they need to start construction. I, I, I submitted this application at the end of December, believing that there was at least one hearing in January. This is the first hearing and they need to start construction like next week because they have to get um, kids in by the summertime. So um, they wanna start demolition right away. And again, what is it that they're gonna be demolishing? A staircase inside the building that's not under your review. Yeah, so they're going to be closing in an existing porch to make that more of a classroom space and then adding on some additional ramps and sort of decking areas. Um, At the request of the state. Yeah, re reconfiguring the the walkways because there's a there are a couple of site plans in here. One shows existing and one shows the proposed. Mm -hmm. um, there's also going to be just fencing in the back that you're just going to sort of, you can see it in that new picture. Mm -hmm. that Sandy submitted today, you can see the fencing in the background. So you said it's going to pretty much match. We're going to match area. that. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be, you know, the same kind of fencing and the, the siding on the new areas is going to match what's there now. So there's not, you know, there's not, not a lot of really aesthetic changes, but it still needs to go through. I think I submitted a cut sheet. You yeah. were kind enough to print it for me. Yep. Of the new windows and the new door. I thought I read something about demolishing a garage or an Oh, I thing. read about that. Actually, yes. thank you, Martha. Thank you. I've actually completely. So there is a dangerous and derelict um, garage. And I've, well, they call it the barn that is going to be torn down. And then there's a smaller structure that they call the garage that they have converted into an outdoor classroom. It's really just a pavilion. And so they're going to rebuild that on the site of the barn and the purpose of that, and it's going to match. So it's just matching existing. Um, the purpose of that is to get everything on one side of the um, easement up into the solar field. And both on the same sites. So everything's so on the same property. I don't know what you mean. So the, let me to hold on a second. I'll pull up on the screen. Thank you. The pictures. Okay. So the garage is being demolished. The, and the uh, outside classroom. Both. Yeah. Well, You're right, Steve. That is going to be demolished, but it's going to be replaced in that exact configuration. It's going to look exactly the, the same. Yeah. But go where currently this is. Thank you. This yeah. is being demolished as well. This is being demolished, but something that looks pretty much like this but is better construction will be built where this is now right so if you look at the site plan that's dated january 11th 2023 mm -hmm. you have some green and yellow highlighting you can see the new outdoor classroom building yes that's yeah. overlaid where it says demo existing bar so that's that bigger building yes. in the picture right now and then what's being there that new outdoor classroom is the same footprint as the demo existing outdoor classroom I, I, can, I think I can share with you, besides consolidating where the children play outside, they may want to, at some point in the future, build an additional building of school, but I'm not supposed to include that in this application because it's future. You're supposed to look at it as it is, but that is why we don't want construction equipment to be going over the path of children. Yes. Uh, so we're trying to get everything on one side so that we can, can keep things uh, safe. Yeah. That's the lowest pitch gambrel roof I've ever seen. Yeah, isn't that wild? Oh, it is a gambrel. I hadn't noticed that. <laughs> it's yeah. the slightest change in pitch. <laughs> it looks like it has so horses. The, or so something. the new building will be on that site. Yep. And will look like. Look like that one. And look yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. Lean to. Yeah. There'll be nothing here to see. Correct. And the other building is. Liz, you're going to need to mute yourself. I am. I am. Other building. The other building site is larger than that. Correct. But you can see that on our state plan. We have a here yeah. that type of style on the other spot. But, but smaller. Will, it, will it will it fill the entire? I mean, is there a slab under the other? 
Um, on our safe plane, you can see the dash line for the demo labeled demo existing barn. Mm -hmm. And the new classroom is actually going to be at a different angle to run parallel to the slope so that it fits against the slope better. Okay. And so the, that whole foundation will be taken completely out. And fill, you know, whatever is, it'll be smoothed off and grassed. And the site where the um, old garages will also be grassed. Yes. What, what kind of condition is this building in? I had, actually haven't even walked in it. They didn't want me to. It's, That's bad, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming down one way or the other, I think, pretty soon. So. Either with help or on its own. Yeah, and it's really a liability with children in the area. So it needs to go. I have more questions about the ramp on the front of the building that yep. has visible from the road. Yep. Um, some of which is like what its purpose is, and then I assume... I don't really need to know because I imagine there's a very good purpose for it, but uh, the how one might be able to like, it feels tacked on in a very sort of like on what is a very traditional looking historic looking building. And then it feels like a very kind of tacked on separated thing. And I don't quite know what can be done to make that feel a little more integral. They paint it white. I honestly, um, so uh, there are a lot of children who cannot evacuate the building on their own accord. They can't walk. Mm -hmm. So they have to be out of the building in like 50 seconds or something. Mm -hmm. So what happens is they keep strollers by the door and they throw four kids into the stroller or into a crib and roll it out. It has to be a ramp. So it's mostly an emergency exit. It is only an emergency exit. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm sorry, and that's not true. I think um, that this people can sound? enter. People can enter yeah. there. We it was only an emergency exit, and now people are entering that way. But it is an emergency exit primarily. And is it? It looks as though it's roofed for half of it, and maybe not the part that cuts the whole thing. The whole thing is roofed. It has to be. You can't have snow on the oh. ramp. So that's not what's shown in this. In at least this elevation, I don't see a roof cutting in front of those windows. Hey, look. I don't think it'll be quicker to look at yours. In this proposed yeah, south I elevation. Think he, my draftsman was trying to minimize blocking the view, the drawing of the windows. I'm all for that. But yeah. so I don't know how you get a roof on there that doesn't block those windows. I think that's why we we kept it away from the front of the building. I mean, I almost wonder if that ramp could come tight to the building and then have that same roof pitch come out over the ramp and then you're not blocking the windows at all and there isn't that sort of like there's not a lot of vertical room there all oh, right you need the pitch yeah. right yeah you need the extra length for the pitch coming down yeah yeah um and we were really trying not to modify the porch itself um yeah um it, you know the building's been renovated many times, but it is still historic. I wasn't thr totally thrilled about that. We actually talked about making it like a curve shape around the ramp. Um, but at the end of the day, it, that seemed like the most uh, straightforward and in, in, inconspicuous way to do it. I was thinking of maybe you could visualize it as a um, like almost like playground equipment, like a you know a, a climbing thing, but um, to get it a little bit further away from the building. But the owners want to have the path be as, as direct as possible to the parking lot because yeah. if there's a fire, they have to get out. Sure, I get they, that. They, they can't. I don't know that we have really a great um, lenience and, and coming. I didn't want to come off the front of the building. We're trying to. You know, kind of space out the exits. 
I think I know the answer to this, but could the ramp go down the other side of the building? We tried. We really wanted it to, but the grade drop is faster than the ramp. Right. I can see that grade drop off here is pretty significant. That's my question too, Larry. Yeah, the, it basically was impossible. Not without spending a lot of money to fill that in. Yeah. <laughs> and so that, you said that the, the porch is going to be enclosed. So what we're looking at here will be the front of the building. Right. There's a drawing in this section that Benjamin held up that shows what that front of the porch would look like <laughs> with windows. <laughs> the other question that then is the hospital will put down one of those really steel uh, floors on the ramp. Where they are really expensive, but they might be cheaper than a roof. Um, will little feet get? You mean the, the little bitty grate, right? So you're not going to be ADA grate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, they'd be willing to look at that. But um, the last ramp I looked at for building in Montpelier was um, over seventy thousand for a steel structure. So I was just thinking of the floor structure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's possible, but I don't know that that's going to stay ice free all the time either. I mean, my experience is it's better to just cover the ramp. Steve, if you, you have I mean, you have to deal with, you're dealing with wheels, stro stroller wheels that are kind of small. And down the bottom, it's going to, the snow the, is just going to build up grade, through it, right? The great, well, it would, it would, be, it could build up to a point. But we've put a, quite a bit of that in, and the current price of that, even though it's much more than it used to be five, 10 years ago, it's in the neighborhood of $20, $25 a square foot. And you can get three feet wide sections, yeah. six, eight, 10 feet you know, long. And what we've done in the past is we've just built a framework out of pressure treated material. Yeah. And then this stuff sits in it, and it's so heavy. You don't even need to attach it. It just sits within a frame. And it's about an inch, inch and a quarter high. Yep. It's galvanized, so it never rusts. You don't have to do anything to it. Yep. It's zero maintenance. Well, the, um, I would, think the very expensive ones that I was pricing had the whole framework was metal. So, um, I mean, I'm sure they would be willing to look into it, but if you could leave some room for them in case it is not if it, you know it's not i i'm not sure what how the floor surface is going to affect the design of this in any significant way are you just saying this, that you I, could avoid i'm in an effort trying to get rid of the roof like i think this drawing is not very accurate as to what i'll actually be seeing like i think there would be a roof line that's cutting across there all, all these windows right and so i think it even if it is separated away from the building by four feet in pure elevation, I would all these windows would be blocked. And I think it's going to look a little tacked on in. Well, I uh, certainly wouldn't want them to build it and then come back to you next January asking to put a roof on a metal. Roof. Sure. That would really be horrible. They can't do construction once the kids are in. Right. Because they can't, ha they don't have to stop having school. I understand. This is why there's such a push to get this done. Yeah. Um, if you could leave space in there so that they could make a judgment about the material cost for the ramp and then, you know, encourage them to leave off the roof if possible, but leave some space for them to put it in if they have to. I, I mean, I'm sure they're open to looking at it, but um, to box them into something that's unworkable, I, I think would be difficult. I hear that. Can I? I, I would worry almost no matter the, the roof of port roof above it is going to dump all the snow onto that ramp. Well, that's why it's that's way. why it's gapped. That's why it's, there's a gap there. Enough, yeah. yeah, I hope it is. Yeah, if it's planned. I've got somebody logged in that I just need to check in with to make sure they're actually in the right meeting. If you give me just one second, um, Pat. Carstensen, could you unmute yourself? Are you, did you intend to sign in to tonight's de design review committee meeting or were you I, at the development review board meeting? Um, <laughs> it's the BCFA one. Yeah. Yep. So that meeting doesn't start until seven o'clock. 
Okay. There's, yeah. different, I, there's a different link for that okay. one. Under okay. I, I, was, you know, I was confused and I, you know, didn't know. And it, so uh, come back. <laughs> I'll see you at seven. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. What, uh, what kind of a roof are you thinking about over it? Would it be at the pitch of the ramp? Shed or a gable? I was thinking of a gable, but um, in, in just, you know, asphalt, just low pitch room, you know. Yeah, just at the pitch of the ramp or at the... the yeah, the, roo the roof itself would slope down parallel to yeah, the... It would be a slant across, so I would assume it would be a continuation of the, what, what show is here? Yeah. So yes. Cut right across yeah. the top of the wall. Yes, it would. Did, was there any exploration of putting the ramp on the opposite side of the house? Yes. And the <clears throat> but it, it does problem. drop it does drop away too much on mm -hmm. that side. Yep. Sorry. We we tried. No, that's challenging. That site. was actually the desired place for it, but it does, the site doesn't work. <laughs> It's a shame because then that way you could wrap that porch roof around both sides, right? And then come around and. But go the down. grade, it, the grade is prohibitive. Sadly, I like that idea too. And I'm, I haven't thought through the, but if that ramp came off that that level landing that that square level landing, if it came off, not parallel to the building, but at a little bit of a angle closer to the road. Well, um, fire safety is not letting us use that door for the preschool. That it was, it was over there and I was trying to get down the side of the building. And I did have it perfectly clear, but we can't. Yeah, I, I think I have. You, you can go just go up there so you can show what you're talking about. I think I understand what you're talking about, but I can also try and show on the screen. Oh, with that. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about this site. No, that's correct. And I was actually thinking maybe it could even be segmented, like a as I said, a playground structure or something. Bring it further out. Um, I think you could have that push back on it. it. It doesn't make a huge difference. They're trying to get families out closer to the driveway. Yeah, as possible. It would be the same distance to the driveway. Well, it's farther to the park, but you know, yeah, I to the car, sure. Yeah. Um, if so, if you folks, so Ben, you're talking about angle it more like this. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like 45 degrees or yeah. something. So I, I think you could definitely require that. I don't know that, I that but I, I think require anything. I'm more exploring it yeah, as a. The reason why I that's how I had it when first it went over there. We went through a number of designs iterations on this. I had it at more of an angle and then I even had it as a segment. And their concern was that it's farther away to a place of safety for the children. Because you, know, you need to then walk the kids up the driveway to get over here to a bigger like plowed right. space where fire trucks can still get up here in emergency right. vehicles. I just have real concerns about that being like the thing that is presented to the street every time you drive by. Is this just... Well, one reason why I was only half joking about paint is I think that will help if it's a different color from the porch, it will stand out more. But I'm looking at the drawing, what about just bring it straight out? Is that is that it? That, then they still have so you far a from stroller the, with kids. I, I don't. I, it, they 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 need to get towards the driveway. Yeah, if it goes straight out, they still have to get over here and then back up to here because this is like for the emergency exit and for this is sometimes an entrance to the infant room because this whole area is going to be the infant like sleeping area. So you're so, going to make parents like potentially go down and go in. I don't quite understand why that, you know, if you extended that just straight from the from the building and not turn the not turn the corner right because you'd end up on Northfield street because it has to come out There's here no and point. go down yeah so then it so where meredith's little hand is now which is okay. i think that's a great right here if you got the same distance as the rest of the ramp towards the street right there 
<coughs> but you're not really ending up anywhere that's useful to anybody. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. So, I mean, a compromise might be the 45 degree angle that Ben suggested. Um, the only reason why it's drawn it the, the parallel is because that's what Waldorf thought was best for their parents and for their children. The other suggestion if the ramp has to go before it goes on your drawing, I think you could do a, a uh, just a shed pitch for a very shallow mm -hmm. shed pitch for sure. that would, would be a minimum cutoff yep. of the windows. Yep. Just as sleek as possible. Just, yep. Or, 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 hold, or, or hold the ramp tight to the building. And just with the ever so slight, like an eighth of an inch of foot membrane, mm -hmm. so that anything draining off of the porch would lay on the membrane and it would be continue. You wouldn't have the, any. The windows are very high up towards the roof. So there's not a lot of room for more pitch. It would have to be another four well, feet of pitch. Eighth, eighth of an inch and a foot if your ramp half is three or four inch. feet. Maybe it four would. feet times a yeah. half inch. That's a half an inch. Yep, maybe it would work. I mean, it's going to be the new roof is going to be engineered for more load. So if snow, if if that stops snow and water from coming off, at least it would be stronger than it is now. Um, and I think, I mean, one thing you could suggest is that that last stretch that's in front of the building be roofless. Um, I, I mean, think if you can just give a couple of things that would be more acceptable. <clears throat> um, I, I do not want to come back in however many weeks you next meet. Um, we we need to get a permit tonight, so I don't know how you want to do this. If you could give them a couple of reasonable things and let them choose from that, that would be helpful. The word then. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Liz. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Do you want to try to email me your comment, and then I'll still have it for the record because it'll be email, and I can read it to Steve and put it up on the screen. I don't know if that helps. We've just got something funky with your audio where it's echoing. I mean, I'm not convinced that my idea of turning it at the angle really solves much of my concerns uh, about having the, I think it helps. I think it makes it feel a little, a little bit better, but I still think if you're putting a roof over it, it's going to block those windows and look a little awkward on the front of that building. I, I am interested in the idea of whatever the kind of like ADA grading that would allow moisture to pass through it so that maybe you could omit the roof. Could, could we, add in can we put this in some kind of a priority, like alternate one is, is the grading. That's our first choice. The second choice, yeah, what I'm thinking is a very low pitch, single pitch, flat rope that it almost, almost no pitch to it just so the water would run. And you can run away from the building that way. The other way, you're running water towards the building anyway. A very, a very low pitch. We also can't run water to the bottom of the ramp. Right. Yeah. It has to be. It has to shed. Right. I just think you're thinking yeah. of a, a, yep. as thin a rough as you can do. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can do it. You can definitely put in options in order of priority about this one issue where it's like, you know, Preferred, next option, and then you know final option. The great would eliminate the rough if that phase. That so that seems like yeah. that's your first choice. Put in very minimal rough, of, yep. of, you know, very, yep. very thin, low pitched rough. That would be it doesn't it, it doesn't eliminate the problem. And but, to be clear, we're talking about the section that's literally in front of the building. You're right. Correct. You're not as worried about the side section. So if you could make that clear, um, that makes a difference too. 
<laughs> and it would functionally pitching the water away from the building would be better anyway, mm -hmm. even if you fell off. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have another option from Liz. Thank you, Liz, for sending me the the chat. And I do have a way to save chats to be able to print them out. Um, Liz's idea, and another thing that we could throw in there, maybe for an option, is adding some screening in front of just that ramp part to soften the visual impact, such as more raspberries or cedar trees. Although she said, you know, deer really like cedar. Um, and I know you'd also don't want to block the light getting into those windows. So potentially some raspberries. Um, it was one of her ideas, although I don't know if that would work with the, do anything about the roof, but it would still maybe soften the impact a little. That's yep. a great idea. Um, Thank you, Liz. A very large tree, as you can see on the front of the property. Um, so it would need to be something that would be okay in the shade. But I can think of some things that would work there. Yeah, I think landscaping would help a lot rather than just having a, yeah. a ramp a stuck on there. That's very, which I thought of suggesting that myself. But um, yeah. Thank so. you, Liz. That was a really good idea, Liz. I, I'm actually, I'll pull that up on the screen. I've got a Google image, just street view of, from a little distance here. Um, so that I've got up there, so you can see the tree she's talking yeah, about, it right? Which is a way to read anyway. Yep, and so this will be enclosed, and then the ramp will come out here and go across here. And so, yeah, if you put some some shrubbery or something here, especially because the ramp with the roof part doesn't go across that whole line, it only goes across part of that porch, right? It won't be quite as as noticeable if there's a little extra plantings here. This um, angle helps show that if it comes out at 45 degrees or, or yeah. perpendicular to Northfield Street, it actually makes the ramp longer because the the, the grade is dropping. Yep. So it kind of, if at 45 degrees, it actually would end up covering more of the building as you're going south on Northfield Street. Yeah. It also just puts them even farther away from you. The Meredith, you've got to help me with this. In, in terms of the demolition of the barn, uh, I think we need some kind of documentation about the condition. Uh, no, because it's not on the historic register. Under <laughs> rip. Huh. Yep, it's there. I I double checked and I checked the state. These aren't in, listed on the state or the federal registers. That uh, see how this barn. Yeah, I can't figure out if it was used for vehicles or for animals. <clears throat> Strange room. So anyway, we've got several options. The first option is to in, an option to install a galvanized steel grating for the floor of the ramps where needed to minimize snow ice water collection on the ramp. Number two, there's an option to install the ramp attached to or very close to the existing porch with or without a minimum pitched roof over it with a membrane roof covering, which could suffice. Obviously, there may be some more, depending on the depth of snow, some removal uh, that might have to be done. But the the roof that's there, it's showing on that proposed east elevation, that roof is so flat it would require it anyway. And you could take the existing porch roof and run it down and do a membrane roof again Plumbing pipe is installed with an eighth of an inch per foot pitch. And obviously that doesn't do much for snow, but any water will run off of that. So it would not be an issue in in, in most of the seasons, uh, depending on what the heck our weather's going to be in the future. And the third option was the 45 degree exit. I, I think there's an option too of using a very low pitch 
roof on the ramp than its existing location. Maybe that could okay. be three and the 45 yeah. degree one could be number four. Yeah. And I don't know that it needs to be 45 degrees. It could be 15 degrees. It could be 20 degrees. You know. Right. But And then the f last option was Liz's of. of yeah. Which is sort of a separate. Right. Additional option. Yeah. Okay. yeah. To add some screening. Mix and match options. Yeah. Mix and match options. Liz's option could attach to any one of these other options. Right. Or even go with the original just to make the original. If 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 all of these others are just prohibitively expensive for some reason, even just adding the screening would probably help. I think screening would help. It wouldn't solve the no. the roof cutting across the windows. No, but it helps. Sometimes you can't solve the problem. No, <clears throat> that and I mean this is a fairly big job. If this is the only Steve, thing you guys are really debating, we're doing pretty good. Number one option. Yeah. When you're talking about the galvanized crate, mm -hmm. would that option not have a roof at all? You, you could. Yeah. It, it doesn't that, say anything about the roof because you don't necessarily need one. But so that the point of the grade is thinking, to is try to eliminate the roof. That's what I was yeah. thinking. It doesn't really say that. Yeah, it doesn't so. say it specifically. So maybe just to man, you have room. And again, say no roof required or something. With no roof required. Awesome. I mean, I'll take your exact. <laughs> quote <laughs> i understand this is child care facility and there's like all kinds of rules that we don't know anything about and so clearly those are going to supersede this we're just making our hopes and dreams made clear right. but the only issue with the grading is that it doesn't work well with people with spike heels <laughs> but i doubt most of the daycare providers <laughs> there would be well i'm certain it would be ada is. grading which is much narrower yes than that that's the standard galvanized is about an inch spread. Right. And they do make one that's much Three less eight. than that. What is that quarter inch? The only issue with the quarter inch is that it doesn't shed snow as easily, snow and ice as easily right. as the one as the one inch. One inch is really the ideal for when, winter weather. Uh, yeah, so to, you are of very tiny feet. Yeah. Uh, new walkers, but anyways. I, I think we need to put a sentence about in there about the barn being demolished and being not on the National Register, just so it goes as part of the record mm -hmm. uh, that people would, would look at. The other thing, did you know that uh, a D8 Caterpillar has less of a pressure uh, on the ground than a high yield, the standard performance high yield? <laughs> I wouldn't dare comment on that. It might be taken the wrong way. <laughs> An, An average person yeah. with spike heels, the square, square pounds per square inch is greater oh, in yeah. heels square than inch. a large piece of machinery. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you'll notice you never catch me in actual little bitty heels. <laughs> I grew up in Vermont. I don't wear those. <laughs> this may betray my age, but in the early 70s, the stewardesses were prohibited from wearing uh, stiletto heels because of that. They were puncturing the floors of the airplanes. The way to find rotten spots. <laughs> we just we just added the note that the accessory structures to be demolished are not on the National Register. Awesome. We just got done with a court case on the Yeah, people look correct at it. Yep. Nope, that was good. Yeah, everybody will maybe not design review so much. The RB will get be getting a briefing from me on that case. Okay, with those three options and the note about not being on the national register for the accessory structures to be demolished, we'll go through the criteria. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Actually, I need to add a fourth option that they can add additional screening in front of the ramp, wherever the final location, um, wherever it's located. But I'll add that after we go through this. <clears throat> 
Additions and alterations to non-historic and non-contributing structures shall respect and be compatible with existing patterns and setbacks found in adjacent buildings. New additions on non-historic and non-contributing structures that overshadow or diminish the historic character of adjacent contributing structures are prohibited. That is acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Acceptable. Proposed landscaping shall be compatible with neighborhood, the neighborhood, and the site on which the project's located. And again, you have some proposed uh, screening for the parking area. And unless anybody wants to add anything else, we will leave it up to your judgment as to what Thanks. what is appropriate for the site. And again, as Meredith said, it doesn't have to totally block it, but just distract from it. My one comment on that is I like the concept of the raspberries. I'm wondering if there is proposed any sort of like structure or arbor type thing that they would be growing on or whether they would just be a kind of, because um, I think it, having some sort of contained architectural sort of. So mine. Yeah. Uh, I was going to leave that to them, but. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of raspberry bushes. You know, I mean, you just mow them to keep them from spreading. They're not, they're not supported. But right, but if we're asking them to be a screen, yeah. uh, having stay up. Yeah, it, I mean, so. I think we. It's up to you if you're going to make that a suggestion or a, a requirement. I'm going to make it a suggestion. Okay, not a requirement. Yeah, a good suggestion. Just you know, some some sort of. Trellis. Uh, it's called trellis. trellis or support structures yeah, to, it's to help wire on, on yeah i mean that's what i have at my house that's a way of doing it but 15 open to interpretation so some form of support structure for the raspberries to keep them in a more vertical orientation something like that Helps keep the mice from eating the raspberries too. <laughs> <laughs> and it just makes them look a little bit more intentional. Yeah. yeah. Just... I just said proposed landscape screening may be trellised to maintain maximum screening. Lo location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screen from public view acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum event extent feasible acceptable. Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of the building shall create a rhythm acceptable. Roof shape and equipment. Consider similarity or compatibility with roof shapes in immediate area. Conceal rooftop equipment and features on flat roofs from eye level view from adjacent public rights of way and from the ground level of any adjacent properties. Acceptable. Roof drainage systems. Roof drainage systems. There were, um, gutters anywhere or not? Oh. I'll just say NA on that one. Perfect. Yeah, that was one of those ones where I left it because I couldn't figure out if there were any new gutters. And then landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Projects within the design review overlay district and subject to the landscaping requirements in section 3203 shall consider the following. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, and other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. Does landscaping obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements on historic buildings? Mechanical 
mechanical equipment screening, all of those acceptable. And that was all. And again, our options were again to install the galvanized steel grating for floor of the ramps where needed to minimize snow ice water collection on ramp with no roofing required. Option to install the ramp attached or very close to the existing porch with or without a minimum pitch roof over a membrane with a me membrane roof covering. And then an option to install a minimum pitched roof over the proposed ramp location, which is away from the building. So, regarding that new accessory structure, the classroom. Okay. Sorry. No, nope, sorry. New accessory buildings or structures shall be located within either the side yard or rear yard and shall not visually disrupt the streetscape or affect the integrity of the existing building or proposed new building. That was also acceptable. And then again, the landscaping may be installed on the street side of the ramp to minimize uh, its appearance as well if needed. And then again, the proposed landscape screening may be trellised uh, on that parking lot screening. All in favor, <laughs> speak your names. Um, Perfect. I'm okay with it. Steve? Liz. Okay. A lot of Liz votes. <laughs> <laughs> she voted twice. We got at least first maybe four, four times. The echo. <laughs> <laughs> Are you comfortable signing this with all those different yeah. options in there? Okay. I am. Great. And then that way we can get that. As long as Audra's in the office tomorrow. And where I can wrestle with the software, we can get oh, the zoning permit issued tomorrow. I think we oh, well, yours we have to do an administrative site plan report, so yours might take a little bit longer than tomorrow. So we're going to do another layer of paperwork, okay? Um, but that will maybe give um, but is the building couple permits days? associated with this too. Um, there are no, no, this is state building permit. Um, Michelle has um, like honorary. Wait, she still has to review there, stuff. I have. Though, we have right? to pay some amount to you. Yeah. Okay. But she, she doesn't review anything. It's all stamped. She just gets courtesy visits, as far as I understand. I don't know if I, this is, tell. because this is yeah. educational, which is different from some others where we right, yeah, under the, still have to review certain things. So what's up? <laughs> but yeah, I'll um, figure it out. It's understand. Stand hopefully, we'll get it tomorrow. But it might be. Yeah. Maybe later this week. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you want to just oh, it should be pens up there if you want to sign there as an applicant. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. Go take care of yourself. Uh, yes, I think I'll send them the email, but if not, I will. Take care. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, group. Andy. Thank you. Good luck with your project. Bye. Bye. And goodbye. Oh, so we we <laughs> December fifth because I wasn't there. <laughs> we can do that. And January the third. Does anybody have anything to add or amend to that one? I move to accept it as it's written. We hear a second. I'll second it. All in favor of the minutes of January the 3rd, speak your names. Yeah. Martha. And Steve. That one is approved. Awesome. Uh, so the quick little other business, if that's what we're moving on to. Does anybody have any <laughs> other business? Uh, so just a quick little note, um, anybody who was aware of the um, application and permit, well, yeah, application that was submitted to um, move the historic carriage barn at 14 Liberty Street, part of that project was also demolishing an attached shed 
Um, so that had was both of those are mentioned in the listing of that barn on the National Historic Register. So it had to go through DRB for approval to get the shed demolished. Um, it got appealed to the environmental court. Um, and we just got a decision on that last week. Um, the environmental court has actually approved the demolition and the moving the shed um, and, and thrown out the, the neighbor's said no to all the neighbors appeal arguments um it could theoretically be appealed to the um supreme court we'll see the vermont supreme court um the really interesting thing is that the court approved the permit application on the basis of the fact that the carriage burn was historic and that the city plan puts value and emphasis on retention and um, rehabilitation of historic structures within the city of Montpelier. And so doing something to save that barn, which moving it is necessary to save it, um, was in the public's interest. So that's, it was a different argument and different analysis of the regs than what the board used. Um, but it was a really interesting way to look at it and not something that anybody had really argued before the board. So interesting. It was interesting and and gives everybody a new way to look at that particular provision that we have. Will they move the existing structure and literally pick it up and move it? Or do they have to tear it down and rebuild it? Uh, no, no, Just they will pick the, it plan, up and move it. the plan is to um demolish the shed build a foundation for the barn because the barn doesn't actually have a foundation. Yep. Lift the barn up, put it on that foundation in a new location where it's right now it's about its back wall is maybe a foot from the other wall on a neighboring property. So mm -hmm. you cannot get in there to do maintenance. And one of the roofs may actually be touching another building's roof. Um, and so the, the only way to get in and fix the rotting cells and repair the whole thing is to move it. Um, and so it's, I'm hoping it all, I hope it doesn't get appealed and I hope it all happens. Um, this has been a really long road for the property owner. What kind of a building is it? It's a, no, it's a multi-story carriage barn. Um, it's a, it's a really neat old carriage barn that's been used mostly for just some small storage where they can, as it's been, as it had been having concerns with it. There's no one living in there. There's no one living in there. Nope. The, the property owner lives on site in their house and then there's an accessory apartment in the main house. Um, there's no plans to convert the barn to living just to use it for storage. And maybe once it's in a, in a good spot, um, have a car park in it, but, um, it's a pretty neat building and there's been there a long time. Hmm. I don't understand how in some cases they built buildings so close to each other. There's a building up on Upper East State Street and literally there's this two feet. How do you even get in there to paint? Well, that's part of the problem. Like they haven't been able to do any of that on the barn. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think, I don't know what they've got on the other you can't imagine the other structures wall is in a very good condition because you couldn't haven't been able to do anything there since the so 1800s. Being able to move it just seems yeah. like a logical way to maintain it. Yep. Yep. So hopefully that stands. Very interesting. Put a foundation under it when there has been none. It's really one of Yeah. Oh, that's huge. It's really huge. I'm hoping it all happens. Anyone have anything else? Or do I hear a motion to adjourn? I will to adjourn. I will second. All in favor, speak your names. Ben. Steve. Yeah. Liz. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Next meeting is on a Tuesday, Tuesday, February 21st.